Hello and welcome to our watercolor journey. There are so many techniques that a beginner can use to create amazing effects in watercolor. In this painting, Heinrich demonstrates the use of salt and a plastic store card. The materials used are listed in the description below. So gear up and come paint with us. The Saunders Waterford block is at a 45 degree angle and the sides are taped with masking tape. Rub your fingers gently on the tape to make sure it is secure to prevent seepage. He uses the Huahong Hake brush to wet the paper evenly, about two thirds down to create a fairly low horizon line. On the palette, we have Payne's Grey Blue by Schminke, Raw Umber by Daniel Smith and Burnt Umber by Winsor & Newton. First up is Payne's Grey Blue. He uses the same hockey brush to apply the blue to the sky area, starting at the top and gently coaxing the paint down to form an almost graduated wash. He doesn't want the sky to be completely uniform, so he applies more paint here and there to create a bit of variation. Next up is raw umber. Still using the same unwashed brush, he adds the umber just above the horizon line to create the first layer of the trees in the middle ground. Because the paper is still at an angle, the paint blends and diffuses nicely. He adds a few strokes of raw umber straight from the palette, as it will be a more concentrated pigment. The umber blends with the paint's grey blue to form a darker brown. He uses very light strokes. It is easy to overwork the paint with this technique, so keep the brush strokes light. He follows with burnt umber. This is a fairly strong mix and he dabs it into the previous layer, still working wet on wet. Notice that the burnt umber, as it blends with the blue and the raw umber on the paper, becomes a greyish brown. Heinrich adds the different colors from his palette randomly to create different tones and shades for this middle ground area. He rinses the brush and picks up some stronger Payne's Grey Blue straight from the main palette to add here. However, the brush still contained a lot of water from the rinsing, so it diluted the paint somewhat. Keep in mind that watercolors usually dry back a lot, so don't be afraid to add some stronger pigment to your picture plane, unless you work with Fabriano's new vegan friendly paper. If you want to know more about this paper, have a look at our video. The link is in the description below. Don't worry too much that the paint is pooling on the horizon line. You can soak it up with a paper towel or you can use it in your foreground. The paint won't flow down as the bottom third of the paper is completely dry. It's only when you brush through it as Heinrich does here that it will start flowing into the wet paint. He uses Payne's Grey Blue and the pooling paint at the horizon line to make the diagonal strokes for the terrain in the foreground. Diagonal strokes create a bit more interest than plain horizontal strokes as it gives the terrain a more natural unevenness. Take care to leave plenty of white spaces. You can always cover the white spaces if you don't need them but it is sometimes difficult to get the light in your painting back once you've covered all of the paper. 
He's still using the same three colors from his palette. He works wet on dry when he applies the paint in the first time and then wet on wet to blend the paints. By varying the brush strokes with a haki, he creates different textures in the foreground. He adds stronger paints grey blue to create a few darker tones. The main feature of this type of landscape is the play between light and dark. It's important to get the tonal values in harmony. Now it's time to add the salt. Ordinary table salt will do nicely. The paper is still wet, but not soaked. If your paper is too wet, the salt will simply dissolve without creating any effect. If the paper is too dry, the salt will lay on top of the paint and also have very little to no effect. Experiment and find your happy medium. Salt is a bit tricky as it depends very much on the surroundings. Humidity or the lack thereof will definitely also influence the way the salt reacts. The middle ground has had time to settle a bit, so now Heinrich uses the corner of a plastic store cart to score in some lines in the middle ground. He uses the card to create the illusion of trees here. The card scrapes through the sizing of the paper and creates a tiny channel where the paint pools thus creating slightly darker lines. This is permanent, it cannot be taken out, so consider where you want to draw these lines. If you have not done this before, it might be a good idea to practice it on test paper first. Here's a tip. The sharp corner of the card will let you draw thinner lines, and the rounded corner will make broader strokes. Use the different corners to create variation. Notice what happens here. In this section, the paint is a bit drier than on the left. When he scrapes the card here, the paint doesn't pull in the channel. The card pushes the paint away to form white lines on the paper. This is a great way to create light and shadow. Let the painting dry naturally. Once the painting is dried, brush off all the salt residue. We still have the same three colors on the palette. Paints Grey Blue, Raw Umber and Burnt Umber. Heinrich uses the Silvy Ruby Satin Triangle Brush to paint the foreground. He starts by grounding the trees in the background. Slight strokes underneath the trees will make them look settled and not like they are floating in mid-air. Here he uses the belly of the brush to paint some foliage, small bushes in the background. He varies between the colors on the palette to create variation in tone and textures. He uses the tip of the brush as well as the belly to establish the textures in the terrain.
He uses the fine tip of the brush to add some grasses. Very light fleeting strokes, making sure to preserve the white of the paper so that he doesn't lose the light. He moves to the immediate foreground to add some shrubs and grasses with Payne's Grey Blue. He makes use of the stunning effects created by the salt to create the illusion of bushes growing in the foreground. Here he uses the blue to enhance the trees in the middle ground. These trees are far away, so they are painted with very light, thin strokes and they are not very prominent. The lighter trees created with a store card help to create depth against the darker ones he paints now. He's still using the ruby satin and he paints this tree with a dark mix of blue. This one is the focal point of the painting, so it has more detail and is a lot more defined. He uses the tip of the brush to draw out the branches from the trunk. Place the tip on the branch and then pull upwards or outwards while you lift the brush slightly. That will give a solid base to the branch while allowing it to end in a fine tip.
For the foliage, he uses the belly of the brush. He uses the colors on the palette to bring variety to the foliage. Payne's Gray Blue is a cool color, so the leaves that he creates with that will recede a bit, while the leaves painted with raw umber or burnt umber will come slightly forward. In this way, he creates a three-dimensional effect in the tree. He adds a few strokes underneath the tree to ground it. Don't be afraid to experiment with different techniques. Each time you do, you will discover something new. Thank you for watching. Vaya con Dios.